Hey guys, welcome back. Happy New Year <laughs> from Valken Actual and myself, Kaiju. This is episode 21 of the Valken Debrief and we are live, 100% live, every week, coming at you from the beautiful Colorado Ranch. And it's not last week. I know, not last week. <laughs> we had vacation. We had vacation last week. That is, that is, that mm -hmm. is correct. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed the uh, little new intro we had spun up there for you. Um, and being Colorado, I'm kind of jealous that everybody else is getting snow right now. <laughs> I'm not. And not us. I got, I got the longer commute. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> it's, it's, it may be only 30, 35 degrees here, but there's not a cloud in the sky. Yeah. Pike's peak is completely bare, but I think it's cause we're going to probably get slammed yeah. later on. But that's very likely. Thank you. Those of us that are joining us. Thank you so much for that. You come back every week. Please comment and share. Hit that share button. If we can get up to uh, 50 viewers today, we're going to give away two prizes, not just one. And moving on to that, let's talk about last our last winner from before the break for the Falcon Energy LiPo Charger and LiPo Safety Sack. That is Jeffrey Thompson. Congratulations, Jeffrey. Hit us up. We'll uh, tag you in the comments below and just send us your information and uh, we'll get that sent out to you right away. And our giveaway for this week is our new Falcon Tango Thermal Lens Goggle. All right. Yes, we've always had the single lens available but now this is the uh, thermal lens. Still comes with three different lenses, uh, prescription insert, um, the little protective sleeve, you know, the cover, dust the cover. cover, dust cover. Yep, and it comes in black, Oliver tan. So please share. Everyone that shares will have a chance to win a pair. And if we can get up to 50 viewers, we're about halfway there already, then we'll give away two pairs today. So, so share. Share, 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 just smash the share button. I know, oh. I know Woodcock, you, you can just mash that button. Come on, buddy. <laughs> you got my back. We were just talking about him. He created a Facebook profile just to watch this show. I know that is dedication. That's my boy. He's got my back all day long. So moving on to a uh, regular part of the show. Now the event update, and we're going to be starting off this weekend, January 7th. Here in the Rockies region, JTAC Milsim is hosting Op Homefront at Coyote Creek Airsoft in Bennett, Colorado. So you guys know where I'm going to be on Sunday. And on um, January 13th in our Valken Alliance Midwest region, as the Cobra Airsoft Legion is hosting Operation Snow Leopard 2 at Blast Camp in Hobart, Indiana. Right now, there's... A I, right now with the Falcon Alliance, there, there's like a little competition between Midwest and South region of getting the most events right now. So um, a lot going on in Midwest and South. January 19th, also in the Midwest region, 14th LID official and XFOG are hosting Op Red Eye at Kalamazoo Airsoft <laughs> in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Michigan. Oh, right where our good buddy A Train. That's where the secret base is. That's where the that's that's where A Train from YouTube is. That's where that's where the big studio is. They got the big budget. I know, but we we got big things happening here. Oh with this yeah, studio. <clears throat> As you can see with the new intro, we we got a little bit more money, so we're we're kind of chipping away at that Falcon Core budget. Yep, yep. Yeah. Better watch out, Train. We're coming. Yeah, it's, it's you all and about Chad, that we're partition. coming for you and Chad. Parting it out. <laughs> Okay, uh, January 20th in the Midwest, Indy Paintball Battleground is hosting Airsoft Open Play in Greenwood, Indiana. Oh, awesome. And then heading back over to the Pacific region, West Coast, January 23rd and 26th, we're going to be at Shacho! Shacho! <laughs> Las Vegas, Nevada. Our booth number is 3826 down on the main floor. For those of you that are going, when you come in through the main entrance, bang a left. Same place as last, that was last year, but yeah. Same place. No, 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 you bang a right. Oh, the main entrance. No, down the escalators, through the door, down the hall, bang a right. That's when you're coming from the Venetian, but if you're coming in through the front entrance. Yeah. Yeah, bang a left and a right. Yeah, left <laughs> through the doors. 
Anyway, we like to anyway. bang left and bang right. Okay. We like to do that. Um, we will be coming to you uh, live with a lot of stuff from the SHOT Show floor. You'll be able to watch us every day. Um, we're going to be giving a lot of updates of what's going on. So be sure to have your notifications turned on for Valken Airsoft on Facebook and on and Instagram. Instagram. All right. We'll also have some stuff on. Um, we'll be uh, updating on YouTube as well. Yes. And we're going to have a one-hour special edition Valken debrief. With some surprise, with some surprise guests. A so, lot of surprise guests. Yeah. A lot. I wouldn't be surprised if we go over the hour, but you know, we'll see how much time yes. everybody has. Yes, we got a lot of guests lined up for you guys. Hmm. Gun bunny, gun <laughs> bunny bang fest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on um, January twenty seventh in our South region. 878 Airsoft is hosting Operation Warlords in Waxahachie, Texas, which is there also happens to be their two-year anniversary. Oh, yes. They're doing good things down there at 878. Also in the South region again, I'm telling you, South and Midwest, they're, they're hitting <laughs> strong with events this uh, coming out of winter. February 3rd through the 4th, Third Coast Airsoft is hosting Operation Bone Strike in Vicksburg, Mississippi. I'm getting so many, like the events are just growing and growing. They are. This one I'm actually pretty excited about. Unfortunately, I will not be able to attend. Uh, on February uh, 3rd through the 4th in our south region, Overwatch Tactics is hosting Conquest of Avalon in Waxahachie, Texas. I believe you'll be attending that one, won't you? Yes, myself and our producer and gun tech, Mason. Mm -hmm. um, looking forward to that. It's at the, it's the Ren Fair. Uh, yes, no, I, I think that would be an awesome AO to play on. Unfortunately, I will be preparing for paintball extravaganza. I will once again be paintball. be running support there. So, because yeah. I, you know, switch hitter. <laughs> <laughs> then moving back over to the Pacific region, February 9th through the 11th, Lion Claws Military Simulation Series is hosting Op Devil Dog Winter Offensive at Camp Pendleton in Southern California, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, I've never been at Camp Pendleton. I'm looking forward to uh, making an appearance there. Looking forward to that, trying to do that. And on February 17th, back in the Midwest, Hole in the Wall Paintball is hosting Operation Turquoise Ridge. Where do you guys come up with these names? Turquoise. I know. Turquoise. <laughs> <laughs> Turquoise Ridge in... Uh, Oh my Tango! God. Operation Tango Romeo! <laughs> <clears throat> Following uh, weekend, February 23rd through the 25th, in our southern region, in the south, Centurion Milsim is hosting Charlie Mike in Blakely, Georgia. And if you haven't heard about Centurion Milsim yet, shame on you. Um, you, know who's, you know who's helping with that? Mm. Bubba Moore. Bubba! Bubba! Oh. Yes, former retired U.S. Army Ranger doing Milsim out there. And I actually caught uh, his uh, video the other day where what was really cool is he can't tell you what's going to happen in the event because it evolves based on what happens. That's like how it's it. supposed to be? I know. That's like real, that's like that's real, like real Milsim. Milsim. I know, right? So looking forward to Open into gameplay. Yeah, what, what's going to be coming along from uh, Centurion Milsim in the future. And finally, we have on February 24th in the South Region, Extreme Airsoft and Ironsight Airsoft is hosting Frosty versus Silva in Lake Charles, Louisiana. So if you hadn't figured out Frosty and Sil versus Silva, that's two of the founders of American Milsim. Yeah. So I've actually been to Ironsight. It's, uh, it's very dense. It's got some great... Uh, they, they put out some connexes and stuff. Oh, yeah, there. a lot of containers. They've, been, they've done a lot of build-up since I've been there, but uh, be careful because it's right up against the, uh, the... the What do they call that? Bay? Bayou? I don't know. The bayou? Bayou. The bayou. And, uh, yeah, bayou. You, might get, you might get drug into the water. Into the water <laughs> get drug in by an alligator. Yeah. That's but, right. Uh, that's, uh, that's events. <laughs> All right, guys. Real quick, we got a special guest coming at you in just a few minutes. But first, we're going to show you this short clip from one of our sponsors. Rain or shine, we control all the elements in our indoor airsoft arena. In between matches, you can enjoy our player lounge, restaurant, and staging area. 
there's something here for every level of player. The customer experience is the most important thing for us here at Battalion. Partnering with Balkan helps us share that experience with all of our guests. I'm Chris Webster and I'm the owner of Battalion Airsoft Arena located in beautiful downtown Jacksonville, Florida. You can find out more about us by visiting us on Facebook at Battalion Airsoft Arena or battalionairsoftarena.com. And welcome back. Battalion Airsoft Arena. Man, I'm, Ever been, always I got to visit, and I want to play in that place. I mean, <laughs> that, that place is awesome. Um, I actually got to see... Uh, a train from YouTube do his magic. That was awesome. Oh yeah, he shot. Um, he shot all that footage. He's he's he is an amazing um, drone pilot. Yes, he is. Indoor, outdoor, uh, whatever. Guys and gals, if you are just joining us, thank you very much. Welcome back to episode twenty-one of the Falcon Debrief, and we got about twenty-seven viewers. And if we can get that up to fifty viewers, we're going to give away rookie numbers, two prizes. Pump up those numbers. Come on, hit that share button. Smash the share button. Um, and, uh, man, we got some, uh, we got a lot of people, Kronos Airsoft, man, thanks for, thanks for coming in. Uh, Daniel from, uh, Airsoft, uh, and you in Sweden, we're going to get to see him at SHOT Show. Uh, Mira, what's up? Oh, and we got some other, uh, events guys. Thank you. Uh, op Rye talks about op icebreaker and Wallingford, Connecticut. 500 square foot factory catwalks and outside play. Oh, I'm def we're definitely going to have to look into that. Oh, Guys, catwalks are so much if fun. you know of any events going on, um, either whether it's a national event or a local event, put it in the comment below. Uh, that would be really, really awesome. And, oh, hello, Roberto. That's got to be Milson Medic. Oh, <laughs> uh, and speaking of Milson Medic. Are you ever going to say hi to me? I've know. walked past you at several know. events. Nobody knows who I, I know, am. Right? I, I, I kind of like it that way, but I, I, my feelings were really hurt at the last <laughs> class camp. <laughs> Speaking of Milson Medic, we have her wonderful fiance, uh -huh. Corey Salt Cider. Call sign zero is our special guest. Corey, are you there? I am here. Hello. <laughs> awesome. Guys, can you guys hear, hear him okay? Sound um, check, sound check. Sound check on Corey. Let us Hi, know. guys. You can, you can hear him. Uh, all right. Uh, oh, and there's, there's, there's your boy Ryan, those beautiful bearded boys. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um, so, w guys and gals, if you have any questions uh, for Corey or Nemesis Milsom in general or any of, any of the other teammates like Dragonfly, uh, Fat Kid Butterfairy, and uh, Tin Man and those guys, please post them up in the comments below. But so, typical first question, Corey. Um, first of all, how you doing? How's how's old Shy Town up there? It's cold. Um, it's actually seeping in through the windows, so I'm a little bit cold. I should wear a sweatshirt. But other than that, where's your I'm doing where's your great. tactical whoopee? You you gotta have your tactical whoopee. <laughs> the whoopee. They've been modifying the Wubby. The Army and the Marine Corps can't right. figure out what they're doing. I know, do. I know. Yeah, because you guys get a lot of that uh, lakefront stuff coming off of, uh, what was that? What lake is that? Great Lake. Michigan. Michigan. <laughs> there it is. Yes. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, tactical Wubby. And, <laughs> man, look at that patch wall back there. How big is that yeah. patch wall? That is... It's eight feet by two feet, but we also have one in the bedroom that's like a four foot by four foot, and then we have two boxes full of them. So we're so gonna you, have to have a patch <laughs> of them soon. You need to have a patch, dude. Then you can have like a Velcro suit and like run around and jump on the walls and stuff. There's already someone from Canada who does that. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh you're talking that. about? Didn't like in sync do that one time? Oh yes. Like, I think a couple like like uh, music artists do that thing where they jump and land on the oh on yeah the wall. Oh, and, um, and, and Corey, Wood, Woodcock says uh, you have a nice booty, too. Booty, booty. I, it's it's kind of getting awkward how often people mention that to me. And it's <laughs> not – I don't know if it's like a conspiracy, but it's it's different people who don't talk to each other about it. It's getting, it's getting to the point where I'm starting to think I have a nice booty. 
That's awesome. You, just gotta, right. you gotta look so amazing in those in those LBX, <laughs> those no Gen Two M eighty ones. So fabulous. <laughs> so Corey, question one: Tell sure. us about your first time. My first time playing airsoft. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> let's make that let's make that um, very clear. <laughs> yes. Um, so my first time playing airsoft, uh, it was in middle school. Um, I had a friend named Manny who introduced me to it. He had a couple of like those clear Springer pistols at his house, and we just shoot them in the in the basement. Um, but it progressed rapidly from there. Uh, went to Sports Authority and actually bought. It was a Springer. Uh, it was like a Springer AEG combo gun where you could oh, do both. I remember those. And it was a Wal a Cyber Gun Walther G22. This weird bullpup thing, 28 <laughs> rounds. Sick. I think it had more batteries than rounds that it carried. <laughs> <laughs> did, it have, did it have like the optic on it where you put the? It's like a hopper. And it's, it's no, it actually fed. had magazines. I was oh. I went big. I I bought like the forty dollar one, not the twenty dollar one. Oh. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody remembers their first, like, legit AEG. Where oh, yeah. it's like you, you're done with the little Springers and the LPEGs, but then you get, like, when mine was a classic Army G36, it was just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that 9.6 volt. Yeah. That, like, yeah it's yeah. like move, I remember when it was like, yeah, you stepped up from the 8.4 to the 9.6. Like, you were, you were serious business then. Oh, yeah. Just big boys now. <laughs> yeah. Went from an 8.4 to, to a 9.6. So you Basically. Was, any gun so <laughs> so then so that was like your first gun right and you're and shooting, so, shooting each other in the basement but what about outside? what about ipro ipro <laughs> <laughs> ipro at that time was either shop glasses or or uh sunglasses. yeah it was either shop glasses or sunglasses or like some sort of science class goggles um but the first time we went out to play, uh, we got about five or six people together and went out to, I guess, most airsofters would immediately go to their local forest preserve or park or somewhere that's got a lot of trees, is a little in the backwoods, um, and we just shoot each other with airsoft guns, and I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, you got a little uh, little guest to your right there that's I do. trying to peek in? Yeah, that's Echo over there. He's he's Echo, Echo, <laughs> Echo. Um, oh yes, Christine says she's trying to run on the treadmill and chat, but it is extremely difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can I can vouch for that. It is difficult. Oh, Mira Springer shotgun with point one twos. That's Ooh. where like when you pump it and they all go. Whoosh, <laughs> hey, I had like I remember building a tracer shotgun that shot one two tracers. That was fun. Oh, because like it was one of the ones that had like a little slider hop up, like really basic hop up. Oh yeah. Oh, I nice. felt like what's his name from uh, No Country for Old Men. <laughs> oh, that I like that noise. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right. So, how was Nemesis Milsom created? Oh yes, yes, yes. Give us the oh, man. This game. Yeah, back back a ways. Um, so Nemesis Milsim, um, as a team, was created in 2007. Um, wow. And so we, yeah, we've been around for 10 years, uh, getting close to 11 now. Um, but it started out, actually, in a really weird way. Um, me oh, and, like I said, always. <laughs> my friend Manny and I, uh, we had actually started a team called Arclight at the time. It, it was some acronym. I don't even remember what it meant. Wait a minute. Um, Arclight. That, that, that sounds very familiar. It's one of the people from Red Wolf's nickname. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Arclight was a presenter Tim, before right? Tim. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah no, yeah, but yeah. There, was, there was somebody. Uh, that, just sound, that sounds really familiar in the U.S. I'm not talking about oh, the right. other British guy before Tim. <laughs> um, so. We had a couple buddies who started this team called Arclight, um, and we would always go to the same place to play. Again, it was like some woods and unincorporated areas around here. Um, Places and then one where day, you wouldn't get arrested. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. The, the police. I think one of the policemen's sons was playing with us at the time, so we kind of had an in. Um, <laughs> but uh, one day we, we pull up to our normal parking lot, and there's another car sitting there. 
and uh, there are dudes in the car in camouflage, and we didn't know who they were, um, and so we just sat there staring at them, and they just sat there staring at us awkwardly. The only two cars in the parking lot just were both were all staring at each other for like five minutes, and we finally get out of the car and we're like, airsoft. And they're like, yeah, airsoft. <laughs> so we decided, okay. all right, I guess we're in the tournament today. Um, <laughs> and uh, this was another team, turns out, named Aces. And uh, we played with each other a couple times. Um, and we just ended up deciding we would group together. And we decided to name our team Nemesis. So it was just kind of a weird thing. Um, if you know Shoots, Shoots was one of the guys in the other car. Um, <laughs> Steven shoots PH. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We were just kind of staring at each other out the windows, and uh, ended up becoming a team. Oh, that's that's a cool story. That's yeah. a cool story. For those of you just joining us, episode twenty-one, Valken debrief live. We are here uh, with myself, Kaiju, Valken actual, and Corey Saltsider, call sign zero. Oh, excuse me. Pardon me. Too much Dr. Pepper from Nemesis Hello. Milson. And if you guys got a question for him. Uh, please post it up in the com in the chat below. Also, hit that share button, dude. We're up to like forty two, eight away, forty two, eight people away from Keep giving away two prizes. Oh, it dropped. You said Keep something. You jinxed oh. us. Keep, Keep hitting on, that share button. That 50 mark. Keep hitting that share button. Um, yeah. Oh. What's this prize? It's a it's a thermal lens full size goggle. It's your first like full size. Yeah, Delio, you know, right? three lenses comes with the case, comes with the dust cover, and that's right. And that the arc Those sensor, kind of... you don't have to, you don't uh, have to track that down. You just take it to your local optometrist, optician, do eye doctor, wherever you go. Yeah, um, lens awesome. crafters. It's a big word for you, up. My mom's <laughs> optometrist. Opt optometrist. <laughs> optometrist. <laughs> hey, Ryan, they they just, they have us projected on a wall, and we are eight by twelve feet right now. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, best comment of the uh, of the chat right now. Wait, but they've been doing that for a while now, haven't they? I know, but the fact that that they're still we're here at what episode twenty one. Yes, we're Ryan still... has been with us since the beginning. Yeah. Um. Hey, uh, Jamal asks Corey, what are some of your favorite fields to play at, and why? Um, in the Chicagoland area, uh, there's there's not a lot of fields. Um, but the ones that have come out and have stuck around have really made a difference um, and really shown initiative and uh, innovation in our community. My favorite one to play at um, for the past year or so has been Black Ops um, up in Bristol, Wisconsin. Uh, oh the owner's name is Will Pace. It's a huge field. It's like 120 acres or so, and they have a city with over 60 buildings, so uh, they got bridges they got two-story buildings coming up they got um and the guy all he all he cares about is airsoft and that's the greatest part about that field and why i really like going to it is because will every time every time he thinks of something that he wants to do in airsoft and he's like that would be really cool he puts that into his own field um and and that's like every airsofter's dream really is to see those fields where all those cool things that you think of actually get implemented so uh, right now, Black Ops is definitely my go-to field. Um, but other than that, Blast Camp has always been around. It's been a staple of our community for a long time. And it's always, uh, no pun intended, Blast to go to Blast Camp. Well, Vir uh, Virgil, Virgil's he's, they're solid. celebrating 30 years this wow. year. Yeah. They have they have like over a dozen events just for Airsoft. Yeah. Because they, they do both. Bonus. They do the Battle of Hoth. They do a lot Dude, of I really. Dude, I so want to go to Battle of Hoth with my Snow Trooper. Oh, there you go. It's it's Dude. the real like, real general field. Because that's Virgil's what, that's, a really cool that's guy. A, I met that's him at like the a first... missile base, wasn't it? Or yeah, Nike missile. It was base. a Nike missile base. Yep. Oh. But the thing is, is, like everybody think it was the control center for the missile base. The actual silos are a couple miles away, or ten miles, sure. a couple miles. Like hey, Corey, you you remember yeah. Scruffs? From, oh my goodness, from, Robo Murray's here from, from Op Thirty Four. Rob Marshall, call sign. Oh, Scruffs. of course, I know Rob. Yeah, he has a very good question know. for you. Can Corey Salt Cider grow a beard? <laughs> that we all want to know. You're gonna have to ask Christine that. Um, 
Every time I've tried, she's chased me around the house with either scissors or a razor blade. So. Well, you gotta tell her that you have to let it. You have to let it grow out, and you know it gets softer. Um, it's the short bristly is like my my kids hate it when it's like real short. It's like, tickle, dad. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you gotta let it grow out, and then uh, I use uh, coconut oil and um, oh gosh, what's that stuff called? It's a, in a it's an essential oil. Um, Either like a cedar oh, or a I tea use, tree. I use a bomb. I don't use oil. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I like the best. Thing, I think everyone with a new beard does is where they start playing with it all the time. No. And I you're don't. Like constantly doing this. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> it becomes a new rub, wor- worry stone or something to tug yeah. on. And eventually my lips go numb and I'm like, <laughs> I need to get rid of this. <laughs> I can't even talk anymore. No, like I got, I got roped into the whole like when it became like the big – the in thing to do in airsoft and everybody's like oh you're just you know you're you're jumping on that bandwagon and it's like i uh, know my father my grandfather i have it it's it's kind of like a family staple so you can <laughs> bite me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh so Corey, moving on sure uh tell us about your first milsim event sure so my first milsim like national big big milsim game was broken home too it was American Mel Sims Broken Home 2. Yeah, boy. We had originally planned on going to the, uh, the original end state in Pitcher. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were really bummed out when that one got canceled. So the first one we did end up going to is was Broken Home 2. Wait, so you I, probably remember SeaTac, right? The All the uh, Suburbans. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The I was the COO. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, we we were afraid of you guys those first <laughs> years. I mean, you guys definitely had the rule set in your favor with those little gun portals, and it was just <laughs> run away from them. There was no tagging. Yeah, a uh, constant air supply with multiple laws and you know, <laughs> weapons. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we uh, we exploited the rule set thoroughly. There's there was a lot of changes instituted because people I, yeah. did not like us. So oh. <clears throat> Great question for Corey mm. um, from someone named Christine, I believe. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Corey, oh. since you're a notorious gear whore, Ooh, yeah. what are you currently focusing on with your loadout? And have you picked up any new or awesome pieces <laughs> of gear lately? Was there possibly a Christmas present she's getting <laughs> to? <laughs> well, that's interesting. Nudge, <laughs> nudge. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, I've picked up uh, a bunch of cool, really old school pouches that I've been kind of geeking over recently. Um, probably talking to her too much about stuff that she really doesn't care about. Mm. Um, but I've been, I've been focusing on my, I've been switched to a sniper roll. I started out um, in airsoft on a bolt action. I mean, I guess that's kind of a cliche. Most players do start out on a bolt action, it seems. Um, but I stuck with it for about four years or so. Um, before finally, when I started going back to the last question about Milsim games, when I found myself constantly in a leadership role at Milsim games, it didn't really mesh well with the sniper type role. Uh, you can't really be off alone, sneaking around and communicating with your squad at the same time. Um, so I kind of laid off of it, but um, I'm getting getting older in my airsoft years, uh, and I'm kind of just wanting to go back to what I originally found to be what I enjoyed um, in Airsoft, which was sniping. Um, so I've been building new loadouts for my sniper rifles, um, focusing on a lot more chest rigs, and I've been really getting into old school gear, like pre-MSA Paraclete, um, oh, wow. the old oh, wow. back mule loadout and stuff like that. Um, I just got super lucky finding a bunch of that old Eagle and Paraclete stuff at some surplus stores, and it's really kind of sucked me in over the past month or so, and I think that's what Christine might Does be talking about. Does predate, like, some of the original Blackhawk stuff? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, I mean, you make a good point, too, because I know um, Woody and I were talking, and we definitely agree that when you're in a leadership role, your rig really changes, uh, you know, from – you know, 16 magazine pouches to dual comms, admin Radio pouch. and a map and, and a notebook. Yeah, I almost, and also, you know, you almost feel like you got to have like the, the quarterback arm sleeve with all the, the plays or the map or the GPS on the other arm. And I really want one of those. What's that one company that does the, the, the rig that bolts onto your, your 
plate carrier chest rig and it folds out and it's got your juggernaut um, juggernaut cases that's it uh, yeah those what, i want them so bad but what woodcock uh, just bought the uh the helicon uh chest rig and it i mean it's got all oh, the admin, admin shelf yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's cool yeah you were, right you were lamenting that. about that the other day yeah um <clears throat> ryan actually asks what do you guys all think is the most needed piece of equipment for a new player i get it a lot and i've been saying the same thing for years oh that's a good question good eye pro most needed piece of gear <laughs> i i mean i i agree uh new eye pros i mean good eye pro is a big deal um for me especially when when we first started playing there was no such thing as thermal lenses i mean i'm sure there were in paintball but not Cat in the air you know <laughs> nothing look, that looked cool enough for us to wear you know with all our military gear um but yeah i used to get so frustrated even with shooting glasses that are much more open than the full seal goggles trying to actually like enjoy the game when you're fogging out and you yeah. can't see anything and all you're doing is getting shot over and over again so uh, we're, we're, we're not talking comms yet this is new player new, new player. player i don't i don't want new players on comms I, yeah, hi they, guys i see enemies over there <laughs> where's over there <laughs> Where, who are you what are, get up it's like guys i got a fart <laughs> like the stuff i've heard on comms from new players like okay i'm shifting my fire to the left oh my gosh wow. that that actually reminds me of a funny story i was stationed at fort riley kansas and we were in a company defense. Woody, you were there, um, but you weren't part of this uh, FTX, though. Um, so we were in Bradley's. So we were waiting for the big military armored bulldozer, uh, the ace, to come around and dig our defilade positions. Does anybody know what a defilade is? Sorry about that. Um, that, was our that, new, was that was our new employee, Mike. <laughs> and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to talk to them afterwards. And we may be Mike. That's we, strike we, one. We, yeah, that's strike one. You know, that we got is... some interns that are not that are beating down the door. So yes, Mike. Yeah, don't don't touch that again. <laughs> yes, you're you're gonna you're gonna. Yes, we'll just leave it at we'll, we'll just leave, leave it, it at that. that. So sorry, folks, for the technical difficulties. We're back live, episode twenty one. Valken debris, and we got up to like forty six. I know it was like viewers. Right there, I, was like, <laughs> I was like right there. I'm like, oh, but we'll, we'll, them all. we'll try next week. Yes, Get them back we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back. So, looking for this uh, coming back. Looking for this uh, armored bulldozer. It was like three in the morning. Nobody could find this thing, and all of a sudden, I'm a platoon leader sitting in the turret, and I hear on the radio. It was my turn on radio watch. And I hear the first sergeant finally find this kid. And he's like ripping him up and down. Where are you? The kid, he's like specialist E4 in the army. He comes back over the radio. I kid you not. I'm directly under the moon. No. <laughs> this is why we cannot have nice, nice things. And wow. this is why you don't give a radio to oh. a new player <laughs> this is this is why um but but yes um definitely agree on the ipro for me uh i would say uh redundancy you know a spare battery um because there's a lot of times where like kid comes up to me he's like hey do you have a battery i can buy you know because you know I haven't played in like six months and I went to charge my battery and it doesn't work. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know, always check your stuff before you, before you play as well. <laughs> oh, a train hashtag fear my budget. <laughs> We're coming. Hey train. How many people have you gone through? Yeah. You've got a high turn. You were just rate. on Tina the other night on Tuesday. I saw, I was watching what's up with Tina, right? I think Tina's Mike's sister. I think that's what it is. I think they're related. Is that how they got the referral? Yeah, that's how they got the referral. That's how they got the referral. Um, where are we at here? Oh, uh, oh. Uh, next question. Next question. I'm sorry. Like, 
he kicked the little he kicked the power strip, so I got to bring it back up. On oh, that. he had to bring the power strip bring back, it up. back up. Um, so, so uh, okay, okay, yes. Tell uh, when and where did you host your first airsoft event? Yes, because I heard you guys host a pretty mean event. We can, we can when we try. Um, first event we ever hosted was called Operation Silent Shepherd, um, and it was in Bristol, Wisconsin, believe it or not, but at a completely different field than uh, Black Ops that exists now. It was at a field called Buggy Whip Farms. Uh, Buggy Whip? Yeah, it was like a petting zoo at one point that they turned into an airsoft field. Uh, <laughs> Did they so, still have animals running around that you could shoot? You it couldn't sounds shoot. Like, them, sounds like a field here they were in Colorado. Around, yeah. Oh, gotcha. They, they were, had a specific rule: do not shoot. <laughs> yeah, we we put costumes on them and everything. Um, <laughs> no, but. What we did implement at our first event, and we got about 35 or so players, what we did implement was something that we, um, that we came up with. It was a little bit, it was a little bit what, we, what we had imagined a dam at an AMS game would have been called. And we called it a SIM, which stood for Squad Immersive Mission, um, where we would, players would sign up and their So you'd team. solve the problem. It's a SIM mission, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a sim. Wait, there's no military. No, it's just a sim. It's just a sim, not military. Oh, just a sim. We'll, we'll change it. It's not always military. Um, but basically, what we do is we take a five to ten man squad of guys, um, and we would put them through a scenario. Um, and at this first event, there was a, a broken down truck on the field, like a box truck, and we put them in the back of there with just a red light. Um, and had one of our guys act like he was driving it, and we shook the thing, and it had all kinds of sound effects <laughs> and everything. Um, and then they had to break out and uh, basically arrest the cartel leader. Hmm. Um, they were a SWAT team moving to to their wherever they were being sent to. Um, but we it's not always military related when we do those sims. In fact, sometimes we put the other the guys we make them the squad be the bad guys. We've had them have to rob a bank before and escape without getting caught by the police. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, it's like doing like Battlefield Hardline stuff. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I so remember. that was our first event, and that was in uh, March of 2013 that we first started. I remember my first dam. Uh, our squad was pretty NVG heavy, so our instructions were to look for a vehicle marked with an IR chem light. And... It was during, you know, it was like a pre-pre-game mm -hmm. before the actual event. And so people were still coming in to the AO. So we were searching everybody. <laughs> and we found out that the chem light was nestled above the license plate. And when you looked under it uh, through nods, you you couldn't see, could tell because of the lights that shine on the uh, <laughs> license plate. <that's... laughs> you know, I we had a lot of... Very, uh, people like, you know, wouldn't even like crack the window. <laughs> like, <"Eek>, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had to, I've, I've never had the chance to do a dam or oh, really? a special, I guess I'm not. Maybe we should change that. This yeah. Year. You got a lot of homies you can play with. I know. Right. Um, uh, real quick. Uh, oh, Jamal says, what's the biggest Milsom event for a new player that won't get overwhelmed, but still have fun? That's a good question. Uh, I mean, I, I kind of got an idea. What's overwhelmed? Like overwhelmed with uh, the intensity of it, or overwhelmed by physical exertion, or structure? Structure, structure is a structure is a big thing too. Because I've seen some kids, and I say kids, anybody younger than me, I call a kid. Even even you, Corey, you're a kid. Mm -hmm. um, Forever, you know <laughs> that they they can't even fill in very well to the whole command right. structure and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I don't want to do that. I want to shoot people. I don't want to watch something. Um, I think a, a Milsim event that actually has two or three evolutions planned out throughout the day that actually has like a break, whether it's a, an hour break in between evolutions, because you know, most of these new kids are just used to skirmishing, you yeah, know, like skirmish, 15, 20 games, minutes yeah. intense. And then, They've spent their load, literally. They're just exhausted. Um, One of the first teams I was part of, Swamp Fox 12, uh, after you uh, 
uh, passed the selection course for it. The first break-in event was Night Scorpion because it Ooh. was like the least expensive beginning of the year. It wasn't very big. It Night wasn't Sc- super John intense. Lewis, Night yeah. Scorpion. Yeah. It wasn't super intense. But the cool thing was is it, it was since it was the least expensive John Lou event, it got you your veteran status. So you would get your veteran discount. Um, there you go. At yeah. every every subsequent event. Yeah, so probably probably a John Lou Lion Claws. Yeah, uh, like mil- something like they have like yeah. Lion Claws up in California or some other smaller not- ones. I thought Third Coast did a good job as far as separating the game into smaller. It was like two-hour evolutions, and you did three during the day. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, oh um, Doomsday does that too. Doomsday Airsoft in Florida, hmm. um, they do that do that as well. So, Corey, as we're as we're winding down here, tell us what are some high points coming in 2018, and don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 2018, I'm getting married. Yay! Um, congratulations. That's definitely one thing. Uh, we're getting married this April. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. That's consumed most of my time and probably will continue this winter. Um, but other than that, airsoft related, we hope to attend as many events as we can. Of course, we always attend AMS events. Um, but we want to maybe branch out and do a couple new event hosts as well. Um, mentioned quite a few, especially when you guys were doing the, just the early year here seems to be packed full um, yes. of events. It um, is. yeah, I, we really wish we could go to the, that conquest of Avalon event. It sounds like it's going to be a blast. Uh, hopefully later in the year, they'll be doing another event that will fit our schedules a little bit better because we definitely want to see. What uh, it's Overwatch Tactics, correct? Hello, Avalon. Avalon. Sorry, yeah, I was reading. <laughs> wow. I was I was reading comments. Mm-hmm. It's train, Overwatch. Train is is distracting me <laughs> with parachute parachute nonsense. Sorry. What what was the question? <laughs> I, was, I was asking. Uh, Avalon's being hosted by Overwatch, right? Overwatch Tactics. Yes. Yes. Overwatch Tactics is it seems to be the new up and comer, and we really want to. Give them a try. Um, yes. But as far as we're doing, uh, we're going to be hosting at least two events this year ourselves. Uh, Nemesis Milson, that is. And they'll both be held at Black Ops in Bristol, Wisconsin. We're looking at one end of May, early June. It's called Op Tailwind. And we always have an R-44 helicopter providing helo gun runs there. I heard that guy's um, insane. He's pretty crazy. <laughs> He's pretty crazy. He, last time he hit a branch and he was just like, oops, and kept driving. Oops, and and cut the thing. <laughs> they didn't cut the thing short. Um, I mean, so it's fly your own risk, but it's definitely a blast. Um, and then we'll be hosting our Autumn Fog event that we always do um, around Halloween time. Yes, it's, Autumn uh, which Fog. Which is post apocalyptic. You know, Samurai Matt helps. Uh, how really how many people did you have at Autumn Fog last year? This last Autumn Fog, we had. 340 people at the AO all dressed up people. post-apocalyptic. It was awesome. Yeah. We had, you had thousands of bottle caps. People were buying ammo, forming yes. facts. I did that. that they did a, uh, I went to a game that used bottle caps, and that's a pretty fun. That's pretty fun. Yeah, bottle caps are awesome. That's it was great. We had, uh, we had this Russian group, like the people who like to dress as the Russians, who just like started buying up properties, just buying up different houses from people, and like just started like this whole cartel in the slummy <laughs> side. I remember and just hiring people to attack the police. I remember when you guys did Autumn Fog in 2016. Dragonfly, her costume freaked yeah. me the heck out. Oh yeah. my gosh, she was like this vampiress. Yeah, she she <sighs> did uh, special special rules for those vampires. Um, she she hired her own army of vampires. <laughs> <to> adapt, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> There's definitely some fun stuff going on. Uh, Corey, thank you so very much for joining thank us you, today. And uh, thank you all for putting up with Mike, intern Mike, <laughs> yeah. with the glitch we yeah, had I don't earlier. know if he'll be here next week. Yeah, so. well, you're on notice, Mike. I'm, yeah, I'm looking at you. You're up for a review. You know that. Yes. So um, thank you, guys. Please share the video. Um, <clears throat> if you missed this live and you're just coming back and, and watching us, please share the video. Uh, everyone over the, over the weekend that shares the video will get a chance to win a pair of Valken Tango Thermal Lens goggles in the, in the color of your choice. 
And this is Kaiju and Velcan Actual and Zero wishing you all a great day, and we will see you all next week.